Hey everyone, Slyly here. This is going to be a quick informal explanation video for Throwable and how to use it. If you haven't already, check out the product showcase video. And if you need help installing it, check out the Unity installation tutorial. To jump around, there are links and timestamps below. And if you need further help, check out the official documentation or the Discord. Jumping right into Throwable is pretty easy. On the right, you'll see two options, Toggle and Enable. Toggle will just turn on which ball you want to throw, and Enable will enable the system or start the system. If you have more than one ball installed, Toggle will open up a submenu where you can pick from each of them. In my case, I'm just going to start with this first one. Going back, with default settings, pressing Enable will also drop it in the world. That's pretty much it. You can just reach out and grab the ball and throw it. If you're using the physical pedestal that comes with the default settings, you can press the button on the front of it to respawn the ball. You'll also notice there's an option in the menu to respawn the ball using the menu, using your thumbstick. And there's one more setting during the installation process that you can enable for respawning using gestures. So in my case, I have it set to rock and roll. Lastly, you're going to see a force radial puppet where tweaking this will adjust how softly or strongly you throw the ball. So if I crank that all the way down, you'll see my throws are a little wimpier. And if I crank that all the way up with the same throw, it's now bouncing all around me. The most important thing to remember when using throw a ball is that when you enable the system, you need to not be moving. That way, it prevents any desync from people seeing you enable it at different locations. So just make sure you stop moving when you press that button. That pretty much covers most of the main settings. Now, aside from the default settings, there are a few other options you may encounter when customizing throw ball to your liking. For example, if you don't want to use the physical pedestal, you can have the ball appear without one. You'll also notice you can have it attached to any part of your body instead of the default right hand. This is useful in cases of maybe your hip if you want it to be on, like, on your belt or something. When enabling earlier, it dropped in the world, but when I enable this one now, it'll still stay bound until it's grabbed. Again, this is useful for maybe if you have a grenade on your belt, something like that. When I respawn, it'll still be bound to its original spawn target just the same. Some other options you may notice in the corner now are sync and custom. I'll get to sync later. But if you have a custom ball that's made for throw a ball using the throw a ball API, you may see menus that say custom on it. This refers to any animations that are built exclusively for that ball. An example in this case is the follower demo I use in the showcase. When I enable it, this little guy spawns and it enables this interaction with this ball, where once I grab it, he'll take a look and go fetch it for me. And then he'll go ahead and bring it back and return to his spot. The possibilities with this API are endless. I'm looking forward to any implementations you might build with it. Now, sync can be one of the most confusing and complicated aspects of Throwball, because as the person with Throwball, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It's only an option if you have the fizz joint mode selected during install, which is not the default, the default's force particle. Before you switch over, make sure you look over the documentation because there's a long list of pros and cons between the two. And there's a reason why fizz joints are not the default in the first place. They feel different and it takes a little bit of getting used to. But if you have it, you have the option for this sync toggle. With it on, when you throw the ball, everyone else will see it end up in the same place as you do. Force Particle does this by default because it's mandatory for that system. Now, if you turn off sync when you throw the ball, then everyone will see it a little bit differently because there's a little bit of lag in your movement over the network. So I might see it over there, someone else might see it somewhere else. And you might ask why would I ever want that, right? Well, when other people try to grab the ball with sync on, it won't feel too great for them. When they try to throw because of that same lag over the network, you're going to perceive them throw it a little differently than they intended, 
and it'll mess up their swing and it'll synchronize the ball to a spot they weren't expecting. So it doesn't feel very natural. By turning sync off, you forgo all of that and let them just throw the ball based off the calculations on their machine and it'll feel just as buttery smooth as if they were the one who had throw ball installed in their avatar. You just can't see where it ends up. <laughs> so the trade-off there is at least you get to share with your friends the experience and having fun and throwing the ball around just to themselves. <laughs> you won't be able to see them do it, but it's a nice way to have someone play around for fun. Now, here are some quick tips for how to throw with throw ball to get them to feel the way that you want, using force particle and fizz joint as examples. Now, force particle doesn't really require all too much effort, so it's nice for lounging around, being lazy, small little tosses in order to produce big results, right? While it does scale with your throw, it's not nearly as sensitive to how much effort you put into the throw. As opposed to fizz joint, it is pretty dynamic depending on how much effort you put into it, so you can get a wider range of throws with the same effective range depending on how much more effort you put into your throw. With that said, you can then throw however you want. Force particle with the minimal effort means overhand throws are a lot easier than fizz joint. With fizz joint, you'll find yourself having to do maybe more underhand throws, right? You can go ahead and pop them up. You can bounce them off the ground. You can do backwards throws crossbody, whatever you want. So that's pretty much it. If you have any further questions, reach out to me on Discord or go ahead and check out the official documentation. Maybe check out some of my other stuff too while you're at it. And I look forward to seeing how creative you all can get with your throwable entertainment. Peace.